Okay, folks, so we've got lots to talk about. Number one, an update on the market and plays. And then number two, I want to talk about the SHIB. What's the latest on composition and what the holders are doing? And what are the upcoming catalysts that could make this break out into new highs by the end of the year? I'll give you my thoughts and my analysis on it. And the only thing that I ask in return for all of this is that you hit that ravishing like button and also don't forget to subscribe either. Also, happy Cyber Monday. Our Black Friday 100 coupon code on ZipTraderU is still active, so if you do want to get in on that, you still have an opportunity. Of course, total prices on the course will go up when the sale ends. Okay, folks, pretty fun day. People threw money back into the market and bought dips like they never see them again. You saw the Dow up, the S&P up, and tech-driven NASDAQ really taking off. But what's interesting is that what got beat down the most on Friday didn't really recover much today. If you look at broader index-wise, Friday's beatdown was very, very Dow-centric. And in today's bounce, the Dow greatly underperformed the other indices. And despite the narrative changing a bit away from that fear of the variant, the COVID-sensitive stocks did not really recover much today. You look at something like Jets, which is an airline ETF. It dropped huge on Friday, but barely bounced back at all today, mostly flat. Same thing with cruise stocks, travel stocks like Booking.com. You're also seeing continued weakness in the financial services sector, Visa, MasterCard, American Express. I think that what you saw today was that the market wasn't as apocalyptically worried about an entire massive market crash because of this variant, but the narrative is still playing out in a lot of the COVID-sensitive stocks and in consumer spending stocks because historically when people see headlines of new variants new cases going up whatever they stop spending as much they start feeling more uncertain about their future and that hurts the overall economy regardless of what the variant actually does and early reports actually show that symptoms tend to be very mild but still uncertainty isn't a good thing for consumer spending especially heading into the holidays tomorrow the powell of jerome will be giving a speech in front of the senate speaking about the risk the variant poses to the economy and the impact it has on inflation obviously on one hand he wants to make sure that employment objectives are met but on the other hand with supply chain issues getting worse and worse and probably not helped by this new variant situation and a lot of these new restrictions well there's certainly a lot of room for clarification tomorrow that said i gotta say if you look back on friday's trading it was one of the worst post Thanksgiving sell offs in history. There are only two times in the last 100 plus years that the Dow did worse in 1919 and 1931, and the most recent time on the list was. 2009. What this tells us is the market is very, very willing to run for the exits at any point based on any sort of catalyst. And it's also very, very willing to buy those dips back up. But I would argue if these are the numbers that you could see on a reduced volume, reduced trading day, you could certainly see way worse come out of nowhere over the upcoming weeks on any sort of catalyst. So something to keep in mind before we get into the end of the year here. Bulls do tend to win over the long run, but you want to be very, very wary of bears lurking in the forest because they could bite you. But outside of that, you also had some insane dip buying across most crypto assets today which was very nice to see and that brings us to the main topic of this video the SHIB during the crypto shakeout the last few weeks we've all been watching very closely to see how some of the more community driven coins held up and quite frankly the SHIB lost a number or two of ground on the list but overall it's held similar to the rest of the coins and continues to be one of the highest market cap coins in existence during shakeouts of asset classes what usually happens well a lot of these speculative assets sell off many multiples of what the main dogs are selling off capital sells off and then usually goes into dip buying the big dogs and a lot of the speculative assets take longer to come back and if they don't have any staying power they never come back with Shiba, you did see a stronger sell-off but the fact that it's held its place on the list relatively well showcases that it does have a lot of staying power in terms of holders it now is sitting at over 1 million unique addresses holding time has nearly doubled since we talked about it last Earlier this month, we actually talked about how November was reversing the downtrend in one month plus holders that we saw fall from September to October. And now as we are about to complete November, we see that it's not just reversed the trend, but it's broken into new all-time highs. So you have record one month plus holders of the sheep. The narrative that we heard about the sheep was that you'd see November holders plummet as early players locked in profits. Oh, what has actually happened? Well, that has largely not been true. Holders are at new all-time highs. You look at who sold during the last couple of months, and it's overwhelmingly addresses who bought in within 20% of all-time highs. Addresses who bought within 20% of all-time lows in green have steadily increased despite the sell-off, and addresses in blue have bought within 20% of all-time highs have steadily decreased. That tends to be the trend, especially on more speculative assets that you can't really put a number on. The majority of traders will not want to buy something until it's at new all-time highs, and then by that same logic, 
logic, of course, they have to sell massively when it goes down to lower and lower lows. And I don't blame them either. If you bought a community-driven asset at all-time highs and you're headed for a potential crypto winter, well, hey, I get why you'd want to sell it. Selling at all-time highs and then cycling back in if it shows more proof of concept makes sense. But the key reason why there's so many holders in this to this day is because the vast majority of addresses are either at break even or in the green. If you're playing with houses money, you're a lot less likely to sell. And the number of traders, aka folks who are buying and only holding this for less than a month is down dramatically from October. Now, obviously that makes sense as momentum traders have been nowhere to be found. And in October, this was the hottest thing. And that's the momentum capital that largely was responsible for the sell-off in the SHIB. But anyways, that's where we are when we're talking about demographic shifts here. You have more holders, you have less traders. And once you see another round of euphoria, you're going to get a lot of those momentum traders back. But it's time that we talk about catalysts. Let's talk about Shiba Burn and how that relates to this new game that's coming out. So news came out recently that Shiba Inu is working on, quote, one of the most significant games of all time. And they announced via Twitter that they've added William Volk to Shiba Inu games. He's been in the gaming business for decades. He's worked at oodles of different gaming and digital art companies. He's a former VP from Activision and has a focus on virtual reality amongst many projects in his resume. In a Medium article, a notable project leader at Shiba Inu wrote this. While Shiba Inu is a decentralized community, Shiba Inu Games is focused on working with amazing consultants and contractors to build an incredible first version of the Shiboshi game. It goes on, the completed game will be licensed solely to the decentralized team at Shiba Inu for use on Shibarium, which is of course the Shiba Inu blockchain. They'll be able to add various decentralized elements to enhance this mobile version. Wink. This will be able to provide unique opportunities within the Shiba Inu ecosystem while Shiba Inu games remain completely separate from this activity. But this is the important part. The revenue gained from Shiba Inu games and app purchases also provides for Shiba and Leash Burns. Truly a win-win and this is just a teaser of what we have planned. So if this game is popular... What does that mean in effect? Well, there's more demand on the Shiba Inu Shibarian blockchain network and more utility for the Shib. And also at the same time, when people are buying things in the game, well, that's burning Shib tokens. So you have an increase of demand and a reduction in supply if this game becomes popular. It's also contextually quite important. It comes during an environment where everyone is hot on the metaverse concept and an environment where coins like mana are specifically running up because of metaverse applications. So creating a a game on the Sheeb blockchain adds to the idea of, again, potential long-term utility for the Sheeb, and importantly, in my opinion, attracts more speculator capital that connects the dots between, hey, Metaverse is running, hey, Sheeb has something to do with the Metaverse on the horizon, that means let's buy. A lot of people call meme coins shit coins because retail traders buy them instead of the big money, although the big money are increasingly playing off hype and euphoria on them. But the thing is, that comes from the perspective of, oh, coins only make sense as a currency, oh, it has to have some new technology, ooh. But but the truth is that meme tokens are a brand. It runs on recognition and investment in said brand. Similar to buying a painting or really another offshoot, which would be an NFT. You're buying and holding something that you want to have an original part of. If you're going to analyze it from a will this go up perspective, you have to look at the community and see what catalysts there are to make it continue to expand and continue for this to become a meme style brand that retains and holds through both flood and favor. Okay, the other catalyst is that Newegg is planning to accept Shiba Inu next month. Newegg is an e-commerce retailer that focuses on computer hardware and consumer electronics, sort of like a niche version of Amazon. They were also one of the first e-commerce companies to accept a Bitcoin back in 2014. When you go to checkout, they offer several payment options, credit card slash debit card, BitPay, PayPal, and buy now, pay later. And with their Bit pay partnership, they are able to attract users who want to pay with cryptocurrency. But what's interesting is that BitPay only offers some of the most popular cryptocurrencies. BTC, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, XRP, Doge, and LTC. And they are going to start offering Sheeb next month. And allegedly, the only reason that they are doing so is because AMC CEO Adam Aaron requested it a while back because his own retail shareholders wanted him to. Our Ooga Booga folks continue to have a very, very strong cultural impact, and it goes full circle all across these assets. But bigger picture, what does this mean? Well, adding Sheeb to BitPay means that all the vendors that are partnered with BitPay also have the option to easily add the Sheeb. And why would they accept it? Well, the same reason that Newegg 
pay to rent out one of North America's largest digital billboards to advertising that they are accepting the sheep because it gets attention and drives business to the brand. Even if very few people use sheep for transactions, advertising your business with a meme token tends to get a lot of attention. What are you more likely to notice when you're driving past a big billboard on the freeway? A plain advertisement of Newegg or an advertisement that says Newegg is going to be accepting some wacky looking next gen dog currency. I mean, it's just marketing 101. You get enthusiasts who like the sheep, and you get a lot of other people who may have never even heard of the sheep, and it helps Newegg. But more importantly, what does it do? It provides free advertising for the sheep. It's the same thing that we've talked about in the past with broker advertisements. So I think that in totality, what you're looking at here is when BitPay starts offering the sheep to their vendors, you're going to see a lot more adoption of sheep and more marketing. And I think that's going to be a very, very positive catalyst and something we're going to see towards the end of the year. And lastly, Kraken. So Kraken teased listing Sheeb a while back, but now they have officially done so. Trading is expected to roll out tomorrow. They were one of the latest remaining mainstream holdouts that have decided to accept the holy Sheeb. Still no word from Robinhood, but the more exchanges that list it, the easier it will be for the average person to buy the Sheeb and the more potential market it has. And the more that Robinhood has to miss out by not buying it. Now, I don't think the Sheeb needs Robinhood, but I think that Robinhood listing it would create a lot more eyes on it. And if Robinhood wants to bolster their user number, that haven't been very hot in last reporting, then I wouldn't be surprised to see them listed before the quarter ends. At the end of the day, marketing with the Sheeb is basically a golden goose for anybody that wants to list it, even if you're not in the cryptocurrency market. And for a broker like Robinhood not to have it is a big, big missed opportunity. Anyways, folks, that caps off today's video. If you have any thoughts, make sure to let us know below. If you want to sign up for ZipTraderU, we do still have our Black Friday 100 coupon code active, so make sure to check that out. If you're wondering what broker to trade these stocks and cryptos on, well, I'll put a link down below to Weeble and you will get two free stocks when you sign up and deposit with said link. They do offer the Sheeb, so if you do want to trade the Sheeb on Weeble, you can. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.